You're watching Greater Brockton. Mark Linder, your host, and it must be that time of year again. National Coin Week is coming up, and we have the man with the gloved hands and Quantum the top gloves. hat. Yep. The Keep top hat. off the coins. Richard Hand. Yep. Handles coins. Hand there you go. Coins. Hand pick <laughs> coins. So we're here to promote National Coin Week, which starts on the 17th of April, but on the 16th of April at our own Brockton Public Main Library, you are going to do an event for Coin Week. Tell us about it. All right, well, it's my ninth year bringing National Coin Week to Brockton. Um, started this all by myself, belong to a, several coin clubs, and enjoy the hobby so much. I like to share it, which is with any activity, hobby, it's important to keep the young involved and active and, and get them to like it because um, it's twofold. You're sharing the education. That's what I love, the history of, of our money and all monies from around the world. And, but then also, as a collector, you need to keep it alive because who am I going to sell my coins to when I get old? Exactly. Right? So you need to keep it alive. So I um, started off by myself at the West Branch Library. Mm -hmm. I started off with about 23 children at first. And now it's grown to where I'm at the main library. And I had the biggest room available. Um, I've almost had 100 people at one time. I had 98 one time as the tops. I'm trying to break it. Break that record. I'd love to be able to break that record, you mm -hmm. know. Uh, but I prepare for a hundred people to come. Where we pass out a lot of free items from coins to yeah, world you give currency. give a nice little yeah, package yeah, there. Yeah, you go home richer than you came, which not only with the the education that you get, but with currency. What time is the event? It starts at one p.m. on the sixteenth, Saturday of April. Okay, and how long approximately? When does the library close? Five. Five o'clock. We can't get the people out. The security is usually telling us, come on, let's move. And I can try to keep an eye on it, but people want to have a lot of guys that put on great displays. Mm -hmm. At times in that room, there's been over $100,000 worth of items on display. One of my friends, Jimmy Johnson, who's doing the introduction this year, he's also an antique dealer and a big guy into stamps, and he brings a lot to the table when he comes with displays. Um, we a matter of fact, I have a display put together at the main library right now on the upper floor. So if you want a preview, you can go there go now. Go there and check it and see what a $4 gold coin looked like, a Stella with the coiled hair, flowing hair, a $3 gold coin, which we had in America. Those are all on display up there if anybody wants to see what they look like and a little description and write up on it. So it's very informative and beautiful. Is it all... U.S. currency, or there are other types of currency there as well, coins? Well, I, I like myself in the U.S., but I do dabble in some world coins. I have my library is very extensive. Um, I pass out world currency to, the, to everybody that comes, and I have a gentleman that comes every year who also passes some out, who that's his specialty is uh, world currency. Um, so you never know what's going to be on display, and sometimes I've passed out world currency. The, the kids, what I call YNs, Young Newsmatists, this year I'll be teaching them how to um, grade Liberty um, Buffalo Nickels mm -hmm. from 1913 to 1938. They each are going to get three different buff, different date Buffalo Nickels. Show them how to two by two them and teach them how to grade because that's where the the price of a coin comes. Somebody can call you up on the phone, hey Richard, I have a such and such date coin, 1913 nickel, or and uh, how much is it worth? Well, you ask them what mint market is, they don't know what grade it is. Because sometimes coins are graded on a scale from 1 to 70. Mm -hmm. 1 being, you, can, you know it's a coin, but it's hard to identify, and 70 being perfect. Sometimes from one grade to another can be thousands and thousands of dollars. So it's a question you cannot answer the, over the phone. You have to, unless that person is versed in grading coins and they could say I have a you know very fine 35 1913 buffalo nickel and um, that was the big question over here when we built this building this building was built in 1890 it was a bank mm -hmm. so someone said to me did you find any money in here right no I didn't find I found one thin dime From it was the, an 1890 the, dime Really? So that was I a, have it. I'm going to have to show it to you. Okay. It's probably not in the world's greatest condition because this building had a third floor on it. It was when it was Brockton Savings Bank way way back in the day, the third floor burned off in the 50s. So they 
took the top off. It had a whole auditorium. It had a balcony. It was a beautiful. It was oh. called Canton Hall. Okay. But all we found, we found two things. We found a dance program because there was a dance hall on that floor. Stan Bowman told me he'll learn to dance in the dance hall. But everyone said, did the, did the bank leave you all sorts of money behind? Nope, it was just that dime. <laughs> you got the saves, but you nothing. You got the saves, but nothing in them. <laughs> so, so, matter of fact, you know, I did some researches on the, some of the banks in Brockton. Lucia Shannon there at the uh, library with the references. And, yeah. Uh, I've read all about this place, too. So I You mean, still have the vaults. That's, yeah, that's, that's about a beautiful it. thing. So the book you have on the table, yeah, the, tell me about it. The Red Book here? Yeah, the Red this Book. This is kind of like the holy grail for any collector. Um, it comes out every year, and it gets its name by the cover. It's, mm -hmm. you know, it's red. It's a red book. And the prices in here, a lot of people get confused. This is the price is what like a dealer would sell it for. The book is always put together a year before it comes out, so the prices could be very much different from mm -hmm. what you do it. But a lot of people go to a dealer and say, I got this coin, the red book says it's $50, why are you only giving me 30 Right. Well, a dealer has overhead and cost and sure. all that, so there is a blue book which basically will tell you what a dealer would pay for it. But this gives you the history, the weight, the content of the silver, the gold, the platinum, the copper, the nickel, whatever might be in the coin, the history, who made it, um, even colonial coins, um, coins that are made you know, from pioneer days before mm -hmm. we even had mints. Um, history, a lot of the history in there, so it's a highly, and usually I have, usually have enough to give out. Last year I actually had a gentleman that was working for Whitman doing um, New England banknotes, yeah. um, and he was getting me free cases of these things, so people so that showed up worked out. You never know what you're going to get. I highly recommend coming. You. And it's free. It's free. Doesn't cost anything. Doesn't cost anything. So what, what, when did you start collecting, and what do you get out of what you're doing? You know, at first it was um, just the beauty of the, the coins, and I started off with most people as a collector. They started off as a young child. Somebody, like my, uh, my aunt, uncle, gave my mother some silver dollars, some Morgan dollars and peace dollars, and started filling up albums. And then um, got a little bit older, teenager, started chasing the girls and, you know, and other activities, and put the coins to the side, and then went into the Marine Corps and did a little traveling and kind of fed my frenzy again, get bit by that bug. You know, once you get bit, you might be can do it for a little while. Then when I came back out and I got injured in the Marine Corps and um, it was something to keep my mind busy and got back involved with it. Joined the American Newsmatic Association who sponsors National Coin Week since 1912 and uh, became a life member and read about this thing they do and um, started by myself it. and now with the three clubs I belong to, the Collectors Club of Boston, the Boston Newsmatic Society and the Currency Club of New England. I get their help. Um, I go around to dealers and I get donations of coins and currency and books. Um, I call to like LNC Coin Company out in California. They send me silver coins, some more books. The Littleton Coin Company in New Hampshire sends me coin albums. Um, the Mint sends me stuff from piggy banks to a few things I left out there for you guys: uh, a scent and a planchet, which is what the scent is made looks like before it's made. It's just a round disc of um, used to be copper, now it's zinc plated copper. You know, Very 0. cool. 0.8 percent copper on it. So we're gonna come. We're gonna we're gonna figure out a way to come. It's a okay. busy day yeah, that day. We're gonna we're gonna promote it for you. And uh, just to recap, it's on Saturday, April sixteenth, one o'clock, National Coin Week at the Brockton Public Library. Make the make sure you go there and learn from this. Meeting. That's three hundred four Main Street. Three hundred four Main Street. Thank you, Mark. You're the best. Thank Pleasure. you so much. Pleasure. You're watching Greater Brockton. Mark Linda, your host. Stay tuned for more events, places, people, and faces right here in the City of Champions.